Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today uh, the Kronos Group just released the OpenXR 0.90 provisional specification. Basically, this is the last hurrah before the 1.0 standard, and they're trying to get as much feedback as possible on OpenXR. So we got a couple things to cover here. What's a Kronos Group, and what's an OpenXR? Well, Kronos Group is a consortium of hardware and software manufacturers, a lot of very big names. Basically, if you're a player in the operating system software or um, graphics space, you're probably part of the Kronos Group. It is the group that manages common APIs such as OpenGL, OpenAL, OpenCL, uh, or um, the Vulkan API. Those are all under the guidance of the Kronos group. Now, the OpenXR standard, XR is a made-up thing. I, I am not going down that road, but it's basically you take AR and VR, you add them together, you get XR. Um, and AR is, of course, augmented reality. Think HoloLens or Magic Leap. And VR is virtual reality. Think um, everything else. So Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, etc. So what the idea here is OpenXR is going to be a common API that you can implement on top of. So you see here from the press release, this first description is pretty solid. OpenXR 0.90 provisional release specifies a cross-platform application programming interface enabling XR hardware vendors to expose the functionality of their runtime systems by accessing a common set of objects and functions corresponding to application lifecycle rendering, tracking, frame timing, and input, which are frustratingly different across existing vendor APIs. Software developers can run their applications across multiple XR systems with minimal porting effort, significantly reducing industry fragmentation. So think of this as one ring to rule them all. It is one standard API that you use to access all these various different VR and AR devices that are coming to market. Now the funny thing is, while this was all going on, um, the market kind of came this way anyway. So right now you can, using kind of third-party or hackish tools, you can run Vive software on the Oculus Rift and vice versa, and you can run all of them on the Microsoft mixed reality headsets. Now, it doesn't always work great. Sometimes your button maps a little bit different or the performance a little different between devices. So having one common programming standard is definitely a nice thing. So you see this paragraph is another good example. OpenXR seeks to simplify AR um, as a VR software development, enabling applications to reach a wider array of hardware platforms without having to port or rewrite their code and subsequ subsequently allowing platform vendors supporting OpenXR access to more applications, uh, says the VR architect head at Intel and OpenXR working chair. Uh, the OpenXR provisional specifications together with runtimes publicly available at launch and coming in the next few weeks will enable hands-on cross-platform testing by application and engine developers. The working group wel wel ah, welcomes developer feedback to ensure that OpenXR 1.0 specification truly meets the needs of the industry. So this all means absolutely squat if nobody is behind it. The cool thing is we have two runtime implementations today. So actual code implementing the OpenXR 0.9 specification specification. But you need to have buy-in from big players in the industry. Like if they're um if the guys that are actually making the headsets and the hardware and such aren't actually going to implement OpenXR drivers, you kind of end up with situations like OpenGL on Apple these days. It it needs to have support behind it. But as you can see from a few of the quotes here, uh, Epic believes that OpenXR are essential foundations for a vibrant multi-platform VR and AR industry in the coming years. We supported OpenXR since its inception, including powering the first public demo of OpenXR at SIGGRAPH, and hope to see this ecosystem continue to grow with the full um, public release of the spec at GDC. You see right here, so that is the public spec that we are talking about here. Epic plans to continue supporting OpenXR in Unreal Engine. So you got Unreal Engine behind it. The next quote here is Nate Mitchell, Oculus co-founder and head of VR products at Facebook and says Facebook and Oculus continue to believe the value of OpenXR open standards to users and developers. We plan to provide runtime support for apps built on OpenXR on the Rift and Quest platforms later this year. So you've got the HTC, sorry, the um, Oculus Rift platforms are in there. Next up, we have HTC Vive chiming in. HTC Vive is committed to creating a viable ecosystem for the XR industry, which is why we are proud to support OpenXR, says the vice president of product strategy at HTC. And Microsoft is in there as well, which is pretty obvious because they've actually actually implemented uh, one of the runtimes we'll see in a second. You've also got a quote in there from NVIDIA. Uh, you've got Toby. I don't know who that is. And then, of course, Unity is in there, and Unity has support coming as well. So you've got the two major games engines out there already announcing support for OpenXR. You've got the two major headsets, and then probably the third player. I bet you MM. Microsoft Mixed Reality and definitely HoloLens are probably the third biggest player in the space. So you've got basically all of the major headsets saying, yep, we're all in on OpenXR. So that's nice. 
And now I was talking about those two implementations. So right now, OpenXR 0.90 has actually been implemented twice. Keep in mind, OpenXR is itself just a spec. And just like OpenGL is a spec, and then the driver manufacturers have to implement it, it itself. Well, they have a, um, and a mixed reality demonstration already available with OpenXR. You can build applications that toggle both HoloLens or holographic devices, um, da, 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 as well as mixed reality headsets for PCs. Um, with OpenXR, you can write code uh, once that is portable across a wide range of hardware. So they have now a developer preview available. Uh, the early developer preview includes a few manual steps, so do be aware of that. It's going to come back in a few weeks if you want it to be simpler. Uh, but you can set up mixed reality open runtime preview, and the, the details are here, and I'll make this link available to you. The other implementation that was released today was Monado, and Monado is a free open source XR platform. This is basically an attempt to bring VR to Linux, a, a combination that has not exceedingly uh, succeeded to this date. So Monado is the first open XR runtime for GNU Linux. Uh, Monado hopes to jumpstart development of an open source XR ecosystem and provides the fundamental building blocks for device vendors to target the GNU Linux platform. So. Hopefully we will start seeing uh, more VR implementations on Linux that run on top of Monado, which once again is an implementation of the Open VR or uh, sorry, um, Open XR standard. You can kind of think of uh, Monado is to uh, VR as Mesa is to OpenGL, and it really kind of enables hardware people to come over here and for the software to be written to run in a window, oh, sorry, for a Linux ecosystem, which is something that has been missing. It is fully open source and under a convenient license. This means the entire ecosystem can collaborate beyond the open standard and on a common code base. Monado enables XR hardware developers to focus on their product development, simply develop and deploy with Monado without having to worry about the software. Um, with its modular and open design, it's the perfect place to try out your new XR technologies. With Monado, you can on your own or with community, optimize your new SLAM algorithm, experience new XR UX concepts, test your new controllers, and much, much more. So that is basically it. Um, if you want to get into the Monado system, come back here, click the Get Started. It's hosted up on freedesktop.org. Um, and what we've got currently, their current status is uh, the initial code is out there, support for multiple devices, including the Open HMD or Head Mounted Display standard. Uh, OpenXR API supports both Vulkan and OpenGL integrations are enabled. Space relation and view getting basic frame timing input uh, is completely lacking. I guess that's not really a status, but uh, working um, compositor see below. And yeah, that's kind of it. So obviously this stuff is very early on. Uh, this is potentially going to be a big thing. Um, this could be the new uh, open standard for uh, working with VR in general. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it's pretty amazing how um, the communities have kind of merged in the first place. So like I said, no matter which headset you support right now, other than you know some of the smaller, weaker portable headsets, you can get access to the other's library. So it kind of took away a little bit of OpenXR's thunder. That would be a big part of what this would be all about. This would make writing for a specific headset kind of a thing of the past. Instead, you would write for OpenXR and all the underlying headsets would be supported. Um, but and the other part about it is a lot of people are at doing VR stuff are doing it in Unity or uh, Unreal Engine anyways. And in that case, if you want to support a different headset, you basically just tick off a checkbox and do a build for that platform. So um, from the point where OpenXR was announced to today, the VR community kind of merged into a single thing anyways. So it'll be interesting to see how important OpenXR actually ends up being. All right, that's where I'm going to leave it. Are you interested in OpenXR? Is this, is this new to you? Do you work on a headset already? And do you find any pain points with dealing with, you know, do you have a Vive and find dealing with Rift stuff kind of a pain in the butt? Or do you not really see the need for this? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.